Hello, everybody. I'm David Patrick Kelly. I did cast it once. I played down. And we're here to speak to you about music that moves us. The music that moves me tends to be encyclopedic. One of the first songs I ever heard was the first song in the Beatles record. The first song on the first Beatles record. I saw the Beatles live. That's right. And they sang a song that was inspired, believe it or not, by Stephen Sondheim and Leonard Bernstein. Called There's a Place. There's a place where I can go when I feel low, when I feel blue, and it's my mind, and there's no time. It was the first song because it was so early in the 1960s where they talked about the place where they were happiest was in their own minds. And it was inspired by, there's um, somewhere in uh, West Side Story, which Paul McCartney had. And uh, so it's that kind of thing that, that, that has a history. And yet they were inspired by the Everly Brothers and Buddy Holly. And so they sang it in this tight harmony. Um, and uh, it was just very unusual for the time. So that's one of the things. Uh, encyclopedic, meaning the Dockery Plantation. Now this is a plantation in rural Mississippi where so many musicians came from that influenced all the popular music. And one of them was Charlie Patton. Now I won't play his song, but Charlie Patton lived on the plantation, picked cotton, but he was an early blues guy who influenced all the Chicago blues guys, like Howlin' Wolf. And he had songs like Stone Pony Blues. And that's one that I, I think people should listen to, Stone Pony Blues. And you learn so much from those guys, the way they played their instruments, you know. And it just goes on, that influenced all popular music to come. And he influenced people like Howlin' Wolf, went on to Chicago, played songs like, like uh, Spoonful. The other thing that really interests me is the beginnings of bluegrass. Now, bluegrass music wasn't really codified as a music until the 1940s by Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys. And they took Scotch-Irish Appalachian songs and put them together with blues songs, African-American songs. Now, the banjo, which is a featured instrument in bluegrass, was an African instrument, essentially. So when those two musics came together, then you had things like his Lonesome Moonlight Walls, which I won't play for you either, but I want you to listen to. Lonesome Moonlight Walls by Bill Monroe was this combination of the blues and Scotch-Irish music, which became bluegrass, and I love that. Contemporary people that I like are Sarah Jaroche, a uh, wonderful, uh, mandolin player and she plays the octave mandolin too and she sings a bob dylan song uh more layers on layers uh, she sings a song called ring them bells sarah jaroche um onward contemporary world i really like the wild chaos of arcade fire and their album reflector is a fantastic uh, record i enjoy that uh, licky lee uh, is a fantastic busker. I really like people who start as buskers. If you got it, you can show it on the street. You can show what you can do. You can pass a hat and make some dough right there. And because our show once is so much based on busking mentality, uh, the guy is a busker in the beginning of the play, uh, I really enjoy people. I've been a busker. Uh, a few other of our cast members have been buskers. And uh, Licky V is fantastic. You can see all over YouTube. You can see her busking on the street and playing her great songs with very simple instruments. 